as gold sentiment, at least for us junior gold stock investors, is pretty low. I'd like to get your input on how to deal with it. When I'm looking at these juniors that are down, one of them in my account, 75% off of last year's summer high, and there's virtually no bid. How do you deal with this emotionally? You know, it, it's a tough, it's a tough period. And it's a tough time. Um, but actually, I'm quite optimistic about the longer term here. And I'm very used to this, having been at this since 2008. Uh, gold always does the right thing, as, as Rick Rule says. It just never does it on the time frame you expect. And uh, this is just another case of it's taking a little longer to get going here, but we're going to be fine. Um you know, in my view, what's going on is the Fed narrative is dominant. And, you know, I saw a poll recently that showed that 60 or 70 percent of investment managers believe the Fed when they say that uh, inflation is transitory. And I don't believe that. I don't think most of our list- your listeners believe that. That's why we're invested the way we are. Um, but it's going to take some time until those people realize that they're wrong. And in, in, in light of that, what you know, you also see, and I highlighted this on my Twitter feed, which I recommend because I try and put a lot of charts up there when I see things, is in light of this, uh, there's just a lot of money going into the regular stock market. I mean, it's kind of like we're returning to a Goldilocks environment. You know, the um, um, people think that, you know, the growth coming out of COVID Uh, The economy will return to normal. Things will go back to the way they were. We'll have new all-time highs in stocks as we've been having. Um, You know, I talked to an investment manager this morning who said the, you know, consensus S&P is earnings growth of 12.5%. You know, we might get, you know, 12.5% growth in the S&P revenues line just because of inflation, but I'm not sure you get earnings growth if you've got, you know, because they've got inflation and the expenses that they're paying as well. And, you know, we're kind of at peak margins in the stock market. And those margins, in my opinion, are going to go down. So if you're applying a multiple to peak margins and you've got an inflationary environment, you know, stocks during the 70s, which is the last inflationary environment, we were. They were a terrible investment, with the exception of gold stocks and silver stocks, which is, of course, what we're in. So it's been pretty rough. And, you know, my fund is hurt and everybody else's fund is hurt. But, you know, in the last the last two years, we made a ton of money. And, you know, we're kind of, in my view, what, you know, I've got some that are down big too, but on balance, my stuff's kind of going sideways. And so I believe that, you know, eventually what will happen is, um, you know, the, what is it? Buffett says it's a, it's a voting machine in the short term, but it's a weighing machine in the long term. And, you know, I mean, either Powell's going to be right or he's not, right? It's going to be transitory. Inflation is going to go away. We're going to go back to a Goldilocks environment and we're not going to do very well. Uh, you know, I know which side of that bet I want to be on. I'm 100% confident in that bet. And as a result of that, and because I have a long time frame, you know, I find what's going on now to be kind of annoying, but not really concerning, you know, because I just, I know what's going to happen. I, I don't know exactly the time frame. That that part, you know, obviously would be wrong. I'm, I'm kind of surprised it's gone on this long, you know, um, but I do think, you know, the March bottom was a bottom. You know, I, I think as soon as maybe even tomorrow with a hot inflation print, you know, we could be back and off to the races because, you know, the the Fed's winning the narrative war right now. But in, in the end, you know, the data is going to determine what people believe. And, you know, if inflation comes in hot and continues to come in hot and hotter, um, they're going to have a problem. Um, and it's going to be a serious problem. And I'm frustrated, too. I mean, you look at and here we are, we got record monetary growth. You know, the money supply is up 40 percent, 37 percent or something. And, more money has been printed in the last year than ever in the history of mankind. And gold should be three or $4,000 an ounce, right? But it's not. And we're all kind of looking at each other like, well, what have we missed here? You know, and I think what we've missed is just that, you know, you've got to remember for 12 years, you know, it's been the correct move to buy the stock market dip. You know, every single dip that got bought has worked. And, and, and it's possible that it will continue to work. And in that case, we're having a crack up boom. But, you know, if we, we can't have a crack up boom without gold participating. Well, the first thing is, I mean, I think it's an important point to make here, Bill, we should talk a little bit about silver is better than gold right now. OK, silver is cheaper than gold on a relative basis. And if you actually look, I found it interesting. And I tweeted this a while back. The, the major silver companies, you know, so we put in a high last August, right, in, in most of these stocks. And, and a lot of them haven't seen that level. There are three big companies that are at or above the August high. And they are First Majestic, AG. Um, Coeur d'Alene, it's kind of right at its high, CDE, and HECLA, HL. And so on a relative strength basis, the fact that the three major, three large silver companies that are publicly traded are trading above their August high, that's a lot of relative strength. I mean, you know, you've got the GDXJ and, and the GDX off significantly from their August high. So I think silver is cheaper and I think silver will lead us out of this hole. And so the silver names are some of my favorite names. I mean, my biggest positions are Guanajuato Silver, um, Arcana Silver, uh, Avino Silver Mines. I mean, these are, you know, and there are a number of other silver companies I've involved with, Drill Stories, et cetera. You know, Discovery Metals, I love. Um, 
you know, the, 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 the silver names, in my opinion, are kind of the first place to go looking for beta. You know, now they're also more volatile and, you know, I may not hold them forever. I mean, on a, on a big, strong run, I'll probably lighten up on some of them because they, you know, they tend to run hard and then they tend to correct hard. But I think, as you know, you're probably in some good silver names. Um, you know, that's, that's kind of where I would start looking. Um, then beyond that, you know, there are a lot of good development names out there that are, you know, that I'm involved with. I'm on the board of Amarillo. I'm on the board of Rice Gold. Um, I obviously believe in those, but I'm very biased. You know, I think there are even some big company names that just show incredible value. I mean, I think I am gold is just unbelievably undervalued. I mean, to me, it's like an eight hundred million dollar cash position alone, right? Yeah, right. I mean, it's just everything about it. I love. Um, you know, I was a huge holder of Rocks Gold. I wasn't a fan of their merger to Fortuna. I thought Fortuna got a steal. Um, I really like Hochschild uh, Silver or Hochschild Mining, but it's principally silver mining. I think it's deeply, deeply undervalued. Um, been adding to it. Um, you know, there are, there are a number of them. I mean, I'm in Shanta. I'm in, um, some of these are, are and these are, are like 3% weightings. Is that how you do it? Yeah. I mean, a big weighting for me is four or 5%, like an IM gold position might be a 4% weighting. I and mean, that's a big major, a, a heavy weighting is three or four and, and standard weighting for me is kind of one or 2%. So, um, most of the names I've mentioned, I'm at least 1%, you know, kind of often approaching two or three. And what um, cash position are you at? Just to give uh, an idea. Right now I'm down to zero. Before we continue, help us by smashing that YouTube like button and subscribe now to this channel. This shows the algorithm that you value the information and it helps us spread this message. Sharing is caring. Please like and subscribe now. Thank you. And now let's continue. Um, and in fact, when I, my view is we're, we're about to start the next leg up and when we do, I'll press it. I, I never get heavily leveraged. But I do um, add, you know, 10, 20 percent leverage to my positions when when I think we're on a run. Um, but I've been kind of, you know, holding back on that just because I'm waiting for this this uh, downturn to end. I feel like we're very close to ending. I mean, you know, it, it's um, Jeb Henwiger was on uh, Twitter. He said, yeah, I, I just got you know a subscriber who sent me an email message. I can't take it anymore. Cancel my subscription. And my response was great capitulation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and I think, I mean, if you're in this space and you don't feel like capitulating right now, you're not human. I mean, I know I feel like capitulating and, you know, I'm the biggest bull in the world on this stuff. So, you know, you, you got to fight your emotions. You really do. You got to, you know, if you're thinking about selling out of this stuff right now, please wait, wait just a month, you know, at least, and just see a few more cards. We're not going back down, you know, to the old highs. I mean, one of the things I want to kind of address, I did in the letter, but I'd like to kind of address it with you. A lot of people say, well, this is 2008 all over again. And yeah, it's working for a while, but you know, it's going to, you know, we're topping and, and, and maybe we're back to 2013 and we're going to get hurt. And so I, I'd like to just kind of address that issue because I've had a few investors ask me about that, right? Yes. The one, I, I don't think it's, the, I don't think we're at the same scale, um, you know, in, in terms of it, it's only been about a year and I don't think bull markets typically end in a year. Um, the second is the speed has been very, very quick. Again, you know, it takes longer to do it, um, to have a bull market top out. Um, and you're not seeing any structures being built, as Michael Oliver points out. Um, the, the third thing is we're going direct, which is really, really big. I mean, the 2008 inflation or lack of inflation came because the money went into the banking system to repair the banking system. It didn't go to the people. And as a result, you got an asset bubble in, in, in financial assets, but you didn't get a bubble you know, in, in inflation. And this time, as you know, we're giving out checks to people like crazy, you know, and, and, and so that's a completely different thing. The other thing is, you know, this time, the, I mean, in, in, in 08, the rest of the economy really didn't shut down. I mean, I, you know, obviously the housing bubble, housing shut down, <laughs> they stopped building and everyone in the housing industry was really hurt and bad. But in general, the rest of the economy was kind of ticking along. I mean, there was stock market came off a lot because everyone's house was their biggest asset. But again, it wasn't a complete shutdown here. You had this enormous thing, this, this virus, which basically just shut the entire country down and created an enormous disturbance in the system. And as a result, you know, they, they, you, know you got all these supply chain issues and other issues that, that started inflation. And the inflation has always kind of been there in the asset growth and the money supply growth. But now you've got it. You really see it. As you and I were talking about before we started here, you know, you got people paying hiring bonuses to work at restaurants. You know, you've got, I mean, we've got a sign around here. McDonald's is paying $22 an hour. I mean, the minimum wage here used to be in Massachusetts, used to be like $13.50. So, 
And I think they were at the minimum. So, I mean, you know, you, you've really got wage inflation. And I, there's a chart in my quarterly report that shows that as well. You've really got wage inflation showing up. And that's, I was a kid in the 70s, but I remember it pretty well. And, and you know, what happens is people, you know, everything's more expensive, right? We all see that. You go buy a hamburger, it costs more than it used to. But what happens is if, you know, especially when there's help wanted everywhere, you've now got bargaining power if you're an employee. And it's kind of like, well, you know, what do you, how much are my wages going up this year, guys? Because everything I'm buying costs more. And that's how inflation gets going. It's just a cycle, right? So, you know, the worker says, my, everything I buy is more expensive. There are people down the street hiring at higher rates. You need to pay me more. Fine, the business does. But then the business says, well, I can't, I can't survive on that, paying them that. I have to rise my prices. And so it becomes, it becomes an incremental, cyclical, continuing process. And, and of course, it's going to become a problem and what the Fed has done is they managed to convince us all they've got these so-called tools. <laughs> and, and, you know, I just have to laugh. I mean, what tools have they got? I mean, yeah, they can job on it, but they really, the only tools they have are withdrawing the stimulus, you know, um, or, or increasing the, the interest rate. And, you know, in, in the extended levered economy that we have right now, you know, both of those, in my mind, they're, they're not really tools. I mean, they're tools they could use. But if they did, we'd fall into a deflationary hole and we know it and they know it. And the net result of that is that they, they won't be able to go there. So I think they're going to have an enormous inflation problem, Bill. And I think when they, when they do and it becomes obvious, this stuff is going to take off like a scalded dog. I mean, we're going to go through 1950. Then we're going to go through the last summer's high, you know, 2070 or 2080, depending on closing or inner day. And, and people are going to go, oh, my God, we got a real we got a real inflation problem here. What to do in such a situation? Inform yourself and keep your financial education strong. We from the Compact Group offer our loyal subscribers a free educational portal with firsthand monetary, financial, and economic knowledge. Enter our invite-only Insider Club by clicking the link below. You will get access to first-class information far earlier than the rest. We have prepared a special deal for all our members where you can access a giant pool of Robert Kiyosaki's financial wisdom for just $1. To find out more, simply click the link below and join our Insider Club absolutely free. But there is more you can and should do. Build up several streams of income. More and more people realize that they have to take their future in their own hands but they don't know how and where to start. We from Compact offer our Insider Club members unique opportunities. Strengthen your financial muscle and get the edge. Click the link below. Become part of our free Insider Club. No financial obligations. But there's one important thing you have to know. You have to become active. So do it now. Become active and see you on the other side.